Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Living the Life. We're just enjoying our coffee. We were indeed. Lovely coffee by Marco. Absolutely Thank beautiful. You once again, buddy. Right now, our next guest is Madassar Ahmed, who is a CEO and founder of imamconnect.com, the place to go if you need advice on pre marital counseling, Islamic marriages, ceremonies, wills, and inheritance, and a lot more. That's right. Thank you for joining us, Madassar, on tonight's Living the Life. Assalamu alaikum. I it says can't I can't hear anything, anything but you can. Madhasar, uh, assalamu alaikum. Hey, assalamu alaikum. Now I can hear you. Well, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. You, you, you've definitely dressed up for the occasion tonight. <laughs> I love the topi. Hey, hey, this is how I, uh, I always wear this. <laughs> Mashallah, <laughs> Mashallah. Absolutely. Really look, well, welcome to the show. I've just, I was actually just looking at Imam Connect and just over the break. It looks fascinating. Tell, yeah. us, tell us where the idea came from. I've got you a know, gist of it, but tell our audience. No, absolutely. So the idea came from um, meeting a lot of Muslims that for some reason or another are not connecting with their local mosque. And actually, some of whom are not just not connecting with the mosque, not connecting with Islam at all. And it got me thinking that what is it we as a community are doing to reach out to this, if you like, un group of people, right? Mm. So, and, and some of these people, they go through various crises of faith, you know, they want to be more religious. They want someone to be a spiritual life coach to them. They want someone to maybe teach them Quran. Maybe they're too embarrassed to say that they've forgotten how to pray. So where do these people go? And what mechanisms exist? And the other thing that I thought was important was that if you look at, um, you know, if you look at the technolo technological revolution, the so-called fourth revolution, everything you need these days is available technologically and on apps and whatever. So why shouldn't someone not be able to book a Quran teacher on an app or prepare a will through an app or even, you know, uh, book a nikah through an app. So yeah. these were the two kind of things that I thought it was important to create technology to reach out to the unmosked people. But it was also important to think of technological solutions. Mm, mm. Um, to, let, to Let me ask you something on that note. When, when, you, when you mentioned about the generally Muslims would obviously welcome anything online where they can get access, easy access. How do you make sure that the, the service has been provided on the other side by people who are accessing them are actually friendly to them because most of the time, a lot of Muslims who shy away because they just get a really bad experience of going to the local mosque, the imams who say, oh, how dare you are 45, not learned the Quran. How do you make sure that those services are actually accommodating and welcoming? Absolutely. We have several things in place. So first of all, we have a very comprehensive vetting system. We vet every single person sure. who joins our platform. So, for instance, we own, we have a basic, intermediate, and enhanced vetting. So you can see if that person has a DBS check, mm -hmm. has a police check, has a back. So first of all, you know who you're dealing with. Secondly, we have a system where you can review and submit reviews on the imams or on the service providers that are Fantastic on the platform. Fantastic idea. Right. And thirdly, we do not release the payment until satisfactory completion of the actual project. So we sort of act in escrow. We hold on to the payment and we only release it after the service is I completed. like that bit because the payment is what's going to make sure, I mean, unfortunately, that somebody provides the right service, even if there is any, you know, dubiety about it. I that's think that's right, quite important. Yeah. Satisfaction guaranteed. Satisfaction guaranteed. Alhamdulillah. Brilliant. So, so Madhassar Bhai, you know, going back to the earlier stages, did people approach you and, you know, did you get that kind of idea that this is very, very needed? And, you know, did you get support by people coming together to help you do it? Or was it all done by yourself? Alhamdulillah, we've had a lot of support. Um, we've been very lucky. So the idea came to me during the pandemic, early days of the pandemic, you know, right before and during the pandemic, it became obvious. Mosques were shut. How do you provide spiritual support? People are confused. Mosques are beginning to reach out, but not quite. Mm. And so I thought, well, let's create a, 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 a platform that people can use to connect with their individual mosque. And alhamdulillah, we have about 70 service providers on board already. Uh, we, launched, uh, we launched last week and we've had over 120 hours of booking. And it's really interesting the kind of things that people have been booking. People have been booking counseling, marriage counseling. You know, people have been booking grief counseling. People have been booking wills and, you know, this sort of thing. So, alhamdulillah, you know, we've had a good response from, from users and a very good response from service providers. We have every single Islamically acceptable fic you can imagine represented on the platform. So this is kind of fully inclusive, you know, um, and uh, it's had a, so far it's had a good reaction. 
Is it giving you an insight into what's happening in the Muslim in the Muslim world, so to speak? Yeah. The kind of challenges really? you're facing. What are the main areas of interest? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said, you know, it was really interesting. Um, we did usability testing before we launched the product, mm, mm. and when we did the usability testing, um, m many of the people that we were giving free credit to on the system were booking the people, going and actually booking the people, and a lot of it was counselling. You know, a lot of it is sensitive grief. We have so many things um, that we don't know how to deal with often, sure. you know, from, from grief, death, marriage counselling, all sorts. And there are services available mm. for Muslims to access. And all I wanted to do was to create a platform where people know where to go, you know? Sure. And I add one more point, Naeem, if I may. Um, another interesting point that we're launching very soon, inshallah, is that not everybody can afford... 30 pounds an hour or 40 yeah, pounds an hour yeah. marriage counseling, right? Not everybody can afford Quran, individual Quran lessons. Sure. So inshallah, I'm proud to announce that we're going to be very soon, in a matter of days, launching a sort of virtual waqf. Now let me explain how it works. So it's a, a, a sealed off fund of money that is used to provide services to people in our community. Mm. This is a difference. We don't, the actual service delivery happens through the platform. So what happens oh, is someone goes on the platform and they're like, I, I need counseling, I can't afford it. They can click on the work and get the money pay and get it paid for. So are, are you looking at, is this just around the UK or are you trying to create this across the world? No, we, we've launched in the UK and the US initially, um, but it's interesting. We've had quite a few service providers from across the Islamic world. For instance, we have a fantastic Tajweed teacher based in Jordan who is I mean, incredible, with Ajaza from various schools uh, who, who is on our platform. You can book her uh, through our platform, but she will teach you from Jordan. Um, she's actually sold out for the next few weeks. But So we, we, we invite um, individuals to, um, you know, uh, join the platform from all over the world because online services, of course, can be delivered uh, from anywhere. And, and is it just services or can I sell something as well, as in a tangible good? No, no tangible goods. No, <laughs> no, no. We're just about services. We're about connecting Islamic service providers to people that need those services. But that's it's, why, it's, so you, you have a, a bit of a background in consultancy as well. And this is like a, a beautiful consultancy type of app for, or type of service for our Muslim brothers and sisters. Um, you know, how has your experiences in that field helped you to get the best out of it pretty quickly as well? Because as you say, you've only developed the idea since the beginning of the lockdown? Yeah, alhamdulillah, you know, it's a great question, Imran. I, you know, I was really lucky that I had around me a good team that I was able to build very quickly. So for instance, our developer is Malaysian. I know him through my work in Malaysia. Our onboarding team is based out of New York. Um, our marketing team is in Belgium. Oh, alhamdulillah. You know, so we were able You're to work. already international. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but it was all talent. These are all talented Muslims that, mm. that you know believed in the idea, and we were able to work very hard during lockdown together on this. And what about funding the whole platform? I mean, you know, how on earth did you guys come come up with the funds for this? Well, I'm, I mean, for now it's self-funded. Um, so you know, I, I've been carrying the, the the load on that for now. But inshallah, we hope that we'll become self-sufficient soon. Inshallah. And look, I mean, you mentioned that the Jordanian Tajweed teacher. I think it's also a great opportunity to be able to help communities or individuals. You know, for example, there could be a, a refugee Syrian living in Jordan that's not able to earn anything, but he's got a talent or they've yeah. got a skill, which could be counselling. It could be performing the nikah, it could be tajweed. I think that's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for people who are in that position to be able to access something online and, 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 and support communities and, and, and themselves to be able to sustain themselves as well. No, no, this was another big motivation that, that I did mention earlier. Guys, can you guess what the average salary of an imam in the UK is? Take yeah. a guess. Yeah, no, I get, I get that completely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Honestly, take a wild guess. I'll tell you. Fifteen thousand pounds a year yeah. is the average salary. You know, it's shameful. Sorry, like I mean, it really is. And we need to pay our imams more. We need to pay our teachers more. I think, we need to pay I think it's important with us by that we highlight it. Actually, no, no, without, that, look, I mean, I'm, I'm, we could do a full session on just this alone. I remember seeing an advert for the yeah. imam of the the masjid in, in in Istanbul, the Blue Mosque, right, and. You know, the criteria yeah. for hiring him was absolutely yes. phenomenal. That's right. You know, yeah. maths, science, etc. 
So yeah. the quality of the kind of people they used to hire as imams and what they were paid was totally different from where we oh, are. Oh, absolutely. And you, you, without a doubt, we need, we need to look at that. Look, finally, just before we come to the end, people want to get involved either as a supplier or as a service user. What do they do? Imamconnect.com. So we, it's all on our website. We have a tutorial. We have a FAQ section. It's very easy. We have, you can chat to us. You can call us. You can email us. We're very responsive. If you want to come on board as a supplier, we have a basic vetting system. Uh, we're backlogged, but please do uh, consider us. But also as a user, it's a very simple and easy to use system. Um, and look, you're, you're, you're supporting imams with a fair salary. You're helping, you know, communities. And I think it's a, a very easy to use system. So hopefully, inshallah, some people will be tempted to at least check it out. Imam I think it's, a, oh, it's, I a think it's beautiful. Idea. It's a brilliant idea. And as you say, not just the users and people getting the advice, but even the imams, you know, let's, let's get more imams involved as well, you know, inshallah. And also, it's, I mean, the other, uh, the other thing, especially not just, beyond, just, not just within the COVID period, beyond it, yeah. there are many people who offer, offer services that can't travel. Yes. Many sisters at home who might be counsellors, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's, it's a great, it's a win-win opportunity for everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. And, and, but that's what I just wanted to add. Actually, like, you know, people are now being at home. So they're actually getting more comfortable with technology. So it's actually the perfect time for you to offer these services via the technology You just want to come there. to the studio, isn't it? You know, can we do the show from, from home next time, Ajit? Madassar, <laughs> Jazakallah <laughs> Khair for joining us and, and very good luck with the rest of the project, inshallah. Mashallah. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. You see that? Live the life.